the question, what is it that makes spiritual progress? What is it that unfolds? It is the soul, but the soul is not a simple thing. Part of it evolves and another part of it is unevolving perfection. Thus we distinguish between the soul body and its essence. The essence is twofold, unchanging pure consciousness and transcendent absolute reality beyond time, form and space. The soul body is referred to in Sanskrit as Ananda Maya Kosha, Sheetha Bliss. It is a human-like, self-effulgent, golden being of light which evolves and matures. It is this immortal soul body that, like the lotus flower, unfolds. Just as our physical body matures from an infant to an adult, so too does this self-effulgent body of light mature in resplendence and intelligence, evolving from life to life, gradually strengthening its inner nerve system, progressing from ignorance of God to God-realization. The soul's essence, though hidden from us, is eternally perfect and identical with God. Here is a little exercise to help understand your spiritual unfoldment. Choose the one Hindu saint, Swami or Yogi, living or passed on, who you feel achieved the greatest spiritual attainment. Now imagine and accept the idea that his or her attainment is your own potential. That is the surprising truth. The potential to achieve what anyone else has achieved spiritually lies within you to be manifested at some point in your future. Perhaps that thought will motivate you to organize the sometimes puzzling pieces of your life and to put just a bit more effort into those spiritual practices. Visualize the lotus flower in full magnificent bloom. That is the symbol of your full resplendent spiritual potential. Gurudeva shared his own mystical experience of the soul body in merging with Shiva. He said, one day you will see the being of you your divine soul body. You will see it inside the physical body. It looks like clean, clear plastic. Around it is a blue light, and the outline of it is whitish yellow. Inside of it is blue, yellowish light. And there are trillions of little nerve currents, or quantums, and light scintillating all through that. This body stands on a lotus flower, inwardly looking down through your feet, you see you are standing on a big, beautiful lotus flower. This body has a head, it has eyes, and it has infinite intelligence. It is tuned into and feeds from the source of all energy. <clears throat> of course, that potential only becomes practical when you strive. If you are serious in your seeking, ask yourself a series of questions. How am I applying the four kinds of practice in my life now? Good conduct, seva, bhakti, meditation, and yoga. Which areas are most in need of my attention and increased effort? What do I need to do in order to improve? Then do it. We close this section with the hope that each of you will one day visit our little monastery on a garden island in Hawaii. Our Chola-style entrance arch will welcome you inside. We designed the gate with the lotus motif, not just because we have lotus ponds, but because of the spiritual symbolism of the lotus. The gate begins with the mud of Maya on the bottom. The, mud, the bud grows out of the mud, through the water, and into the air. All the time it is reaching for the sun. It opens like the soul into the light. Om Namah Shivaya. <clears throat> Our
Our next section focuses on one of the benefits of being a more spiritual person. It is that we are a happier person. In 2011, I gave this section of the talk, which is on the concept of outer and inner happiness, at a satsanga at the Chinmaya Mission in Houston, Texas. For the occasion, I added a number of quotes from Swami Chinmayananda, which I have included in this presentation as well. Happiness is something that everyone wants to achieve in life. In our modern world, the popular expectation is that happiness automatically comes from achieving one's professional and family goals. Many adults have told me that they are surprised that even though they have, after many years, achieved their professional and family goals they thought would make them happy, they find they are not happy. Swami Chinmayananda has a relevant quote. The tragedy of human history is decreasing happiness in the midst of increasing comforts. Chinmayanandaji would certainly agree that a deeper approach to achieving happiness is needed than simply expecting it to automatically be present when professional and family goals are achieved. Let's begin with one of Paramaguru Yogaswami's Natchintanai songs to hear some of his thoughts on happiness from the section entitled Seek the Prophet of the Soul. The wise who have seen that the prophet of the soul is what is truly of value will not be carried away by the transient joys and sorrows of this earth but will live in the world like water on a lotus leaf. On the other hand, those who are unmindful of the good of their souls will go through life confused and agitated by worldly pains and pleasures. But the wise, who, having the well-being of the soul as their aim, have rid themselves of the idea of good and bad and I and mine, will live in heavenly bliss beneath the holy feet of the Lord, free from birth and death. The ignorant who do not know this fall into an ocean of misery. If a man yearns wholeheartedly for victory in subduing the mind, let him practice Siva Dhyana, meditation on Siva daily. Then he will see for himself that, step by step, his mind will become one-pointed, serenity, forbearance, control, and other such good qualities will arise in him. His mind will always be full of joy. He will not be dragged down by praise or blame, but will enjoy happiness in his inmost soul, and the thought that the well-being of others is his own will flood his heart. The non-mystical approach to happiness is that if you attain what you desire, you are happy. If you don't attain what you desire, you are unhappy. Win the lottery. Get a great job and you are happy. Lose the lottery. Don't get a great job and you are miserable. Webster's Dictionary tells us that happiness is the emotion evoked by success or by the prospect of possessing what one desires. A reflective person knows that this kind of happiness is fleeting. When we finally possess what we have been desiring, somehow the happiness soon fades, and before we know it we are back to our dissatisfied self again desiring something new to give us that elusive happiness. New computer, new car, redecorate the home. That is fulfilling for a few months, maybe a year for the home, but eventually the charm wears off. 